To my eyes, feel the love intensify, glow like dynamite. Give it all tonight, treat me good, I'll treat you right, let me satisfy. I want your body, just say you want me to. I got nothing else to do. All right, all right. Hello, hello. Uh, wow, wow, wow. What an episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Let me uh, just a little bit. Hello, everyone. Let me stop this uh, trash music. Um, what's up, everybody? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, let's see here. Hello, Tom Bystander, JB, Becky, Jennifer, what's up? Assad, Goatman, Dark Angel, uh, Meg Paul, Nicole, Warden, Lady Jen, hello, Ace Boogie, um, Sith Dog. All right, so now, now it's coming in. Now you can, okay, you can hear me. Okay, all right, just, we're, we're delayed here a bit. Uh, Mark Clark, Travis, how are you? Big E, Fat Lava. Maria, Jay is bored. Tina, hello, hello. Greg, Lori, <clears throat> uh, Big E, Ace Boogie, Christian, what's up, man? Randy Suimatsu, there he is. And Musi, hello, hello, everybody. Um, outstanding episode. Uh, wow, we got uh, we got a lot of new characters. We had a 10-year time jump. We've met a lot of new people, so we'll try to go through it. There's Doc Holiday. We missed him last week. What's up, Doc? Um, Galaxy, how are you? Um, Brian Marie, Lord Commander Manny, what's up, man? Um, anyway, so welcome everybody to another post show live stream, episode six, The Princess and the Queen. Lines were clearly drawn, and uh, we got a lot of new characters, so we'll go, over, we'll do our typical thing, and I'll kind of go through the major things here, and then we'll openly discuss everything. Uh, changed. A lot of things have changed over the past decade. What's up, CT? How are you? Um, really good episode here. A lot happened, uh, but I was like, they changed some things, or we got, I guess, I guess not maybe changed some things. We got some details that we didn't get in the books that was shocking. A little bit changed with uh, Lena. That made me sad, uh, but we'll get to that. So, anyway, a lot of new characters. Uh, we're going to have, we see Bela in this one. We see Reyna. These are Damon's kids. We see. Lena obviously go through the stillborn birth, and then that was horrible. She wanted to, I mean, she kind of foreshadowed it earlier. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she just went out and said, your car is in Vagar. I was like, no, I don't really want to, Mom. You know, and, oh, damn. I mean, I was like, no, at the TV. I actually had a 
emotional reaction to that. So uh, pretty, pretty damn good. Um, I hate that though. It makes me sad. We see Jaceris, Luceris, and Joffrey. We see Aegon. We see Aemon. All the young characters right now. So uh, Laris is the new. Uh, I guess little, I mean, not little finger, little finger or, or Varys or whatever, the club foot, um, working his whispers, I guess you could say. Uh, so a lot, a lot of things, Heron Hall confirmed to not be an accident. Uh, this was stuff that was always questioned, but really kind of left ambiguous in the book. So, um, anyway, um, Becky, Allison, a sulky, jealous bitch. Exactly. She is full cunt mode. I'm sorry. I'm just going to use the hounds words for the sake of game of Thrones. Uh, fat, uh, a lot of, Joffrey was the baby, uh, that, were, uh, Rain, uh, Rain, yeah, Rain never had, uh, in the beginning of the episode. Um, so Lee, Larry's clubfoot. Yeah. Bigger player than, uh, than we thought here. Um, so that's, uh, interesting, interesting. They're confirming some of the things that we, people questioned about the book or whatever. Uh, so let's go through the episode really quick. We have a beginning episode. We have, uh, you know, again, Rhaenyra having Joffrey, you know, almost a, a reverse parallel for her mother, Ama, uh, actually, in the in episode one where, you know, she gives birth, it's painful and all that stuff, but everything goes well and she's actually happy and that kind of thing. And before, you know, she's she's happy to have these kids with her lover, obviously. It's fairly clear who that is. Well, we've been talking about that and hinting at it for weeks now and months or whatever. Um, careful people with uh, Nightbot there. If you're using capital letters, uh, and things like that, and too many emojis, it'll time you out. So that's not a person necessarily, it's Nightbot. Um, so anyway, she gives birth to Joffrey. Uh, we saw later that, you know, I guess Lanor ran, basically named him Joffrey. We knew that as well from the guy who got killed last episode. Um, so in remembrance of him, Allison's full-on cunt mode. I mean, I'm just saying, just saying, in, in, the, in, in the language of the hound, um, request to see him like instantly, and she's just she, she didn't even got out of the birth in bed. I mean, this was just a, a bitch ass move, um, just to put it plainly. Uh, so he, but she's like, she's too proud to like say no, I can't right now, type of thing. So Lenore helps her along. Um, Cole, you see, Kristen Cole now guards the queen, of course. He's full on uh, team green, I guess you could say, since they kind of established that last week. Um, but Cyrus, you know, he's still alive. Obviously, they didn't really explain uh, what they did to help, you know, to save him from this disease, apparently, uh, which is different from the books. He's alive. He looks like a white. He looks like he just came from beyond the wall, like I said in the preview episode uh, last week. Um, but <laughs> he looks fucking horrible. But uh, at least he's not leaking all over the place yet. But I guess uh, he don't have too much longer. Shit's about to really go down in the start of this episode. Uh, let's see. So, um and, and then early on, early on, Allison, you know, goes over to Lenor when they're showing Joffrey to her, and he's like, "Do keep trying, Sir Lenor. Maybe you'll get one that looks like you." So it's clearly, clearly, just uh, well known at this point, ten years later, that these kids are not his, and and um, it's not even um, nobody pretends not to know. You know what I mean? Um, Paul Rose having given birth myself, Renera's boss mode. Yeah, I, mean, I would say so. And then. Uh, gets up and after birth all that stuff they they want to make it uh realistic in the sense of childbirth they they said that early on um you go to the dragon pit really good seeing the dragon pit we got to see the inside of the dragon pit which you had not seen since game of thrones but obviously wasn't quite the same so they didn't keep the exact same design but you can kind of see like you can go down and below the dragon so these dragons are like underneath that thing they're not just in the giant pit apparently so that was cool and we see um Vermax and Jaceris, uh, I guess, claiming Vermax essentially giving the commands. They're learning High Valyrian from the Dragon Keepers, all that cool stuff. Um, I love the little joke that they played on. They played it on Aemon, though. Usually, I, I was saying, assuming that it was going to be Aegon and them playing uh, jokes on the strong kids, obviously, Jaceris, Lucerus, whatever. And they played it on Aemon, though, because Aemon doesn't have a dragon yet. Obviously, that was a setup, but that was pretty funny. They say, oh, the pink dread. They brought him a, <laughs> a damn pig. So that was a good little touch there. So, it, you know, it sets the fire in Aemon's ass. And Aemon, uh, if you like Damon, you'll probably enjoy Aemon when he gets older, just saying for the other side. Uh, Maria, thank you for the uh, joining the channel. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate that, Maria Noel. Thank you, thank you. Um, Anyway, so the Dragon Pit was cool to see. Like it was cool to see that, like uh, in in its prime, I guess you could say, before it was destroyed. 
And then Amy goes down there, and when it, I'm not sure which dragon it was that scared him off. Dreamfire, perhaps, that, that said boo, and he just ran. Uh, we meet Helena as well. Uh, Helena had a really, really quick scene. She's she's kind of showing her that she's kind of bookish or whatever, um, but she is a dragon rider as well and all that stuff. So we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, we won't go any further with Helena. She'll definitely have a a big uh, role. Well, eh, there'll be um, it'll be a I don't know if you want to call it a big role. She'll have a role to play uh, for sure, and her kids as well as we get further along. That'll be a lot later on, of course. But we do meet Helena, so meeting everybody's kids. Um, we see um, Viserys and Allison. I mean, uh, Viserys is sitting here. His Lego set has really grown over the years. Uh, he's still got his big Lego set. Um, and you, you just keep hearing from Allison. Every every other sentence is about you know uh, Rhaenyra's plain. I'm just air quoting here. Plain looking kids. Uh, so she's just full uh, on trying to whisper to Viserys the whole time. Apparently, she's brought up many, many times, as he mentions, you know, this is uh, uh, you know, spitting the face to you and our family and blah, blah, blah. Clearly, it's, it's uh, you know, it's not Lenors or not Valyria and all the whole thing. So that's really, really her now buying into the whole thing about Renera is going to eventually go come to power and, you know, kill her kids or whatever to secure her, her right and all that stuff. Um, but then we see her with... Kristen Cole, uh, and again, they're full-on bitter now. They're full-on hate Rhaenyra. He hates Rhaenyra. He calls her a, a, a spoiled cunt, essentially. Um, so he's still around somehow. I guess the Queen saved him from last episode 10 years earlier. I um, mean, he hit Lenor, uh right there in front of everybody and killed somebody, and then no punishment. Obviously, he was going to you know, kill himself, commit seppuku or whatever you want to call it for, for the medieval times and um, but whatever, he's still around, uh, and he he is now full fledged. Kind of, you basically what I'm saying is you got book Kristen now, and you got book Allison now. Essentially, is what's going on. Um, yeah, Ace Boogie, he's he's still he's still he's still burned, he's still burned uh, uh, by the whole rejection thing. Um, but he he's a bitch. Um, now I can kind of you know now I've got. They made you feel a little, you know, with Allison, especially Kristen Cole as well. They made you feel uh, some empathy and sympathy for them in the last few episodes. Uh, obviously, you know, it's a little more detailed than book stuff, but now they're kind of to where they were. Where, where if you, if you, any typical book reader, they kind of know these characters and how they come across. Um, so it's really, really cool that we're we're kind of caught up to that now. Now we're seeing things really take off. Um, but yeah, Sir Crispy's in full bitch mode too. Um, we see Aegon, uh, the first introduction to Aegon. I don't know, I guess because he can, he's wanking it over the city out the window. I mean, why not? Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's exciting for him to do that with everybody, you know, down below him in a way. Kind of when it symbolizes. So that was an interesting choice to um, get the actor to, uh, you know, I don't know. Yank one, you know, squeeze one out in in the window. Um, it gave me Tommen vibes, except uh, not obviously Tommen was actually just walking out the window. But I mean, you know, his hair and then the just the window scene. It just kind of reminded me of Tommen that scene. But anyway, that was weird. His mom walks in. That's got to be embarrassing. I mean, that's like a nightmare for a kid. But uh, apparently not. But <laughs> Allison walks in. And she's full batshit crazy now. And basically, gives him the whole spiel about so you know he's like it. That does kind of play into the books there, where he's like, uh, yeah, why would I take it from uh, uh, from her? That she's the heir, and he really didn't care about the throne or any of that stuff. But then she gives him the whole thing about look, if she takes power, you may be killed and whatever. And it kind of starts working on him. So now he's going to be you know behind her that way. Um, we get to see a really cool scene with Caraxes and Damon, and then Vagar and Lena. We see Vagar and Lena, uh, adult Lena now. Um, Vagar is fucking huge. And then we saw I don't I don't know how they train this or how this happens, but it, it looked cool. But she's like Dracaris, and Vagar blows this fireball, and Damon flies through it, showing off over in uh, Pentos. <laughs> and then I don't know how he flies through it. I know it wouldn't hurt the dragon. But uh, he didn't even have his hair went on fire, so maybe he's magical too, like Danny in that, in that instance. I don't know. That was it looked cool, but it was kind of silly. Uh, what's up, Carol Brown? How are you? There she is. There's a DC diva. Um, Jenny of Colston, yeah, Aegon ex exhibitionist. Apparently, apparently, uh, yeah. So, 
Uh, it kind of kind of gives you, uh, I guess, some insight into his character uh, later on. But again, he, at first, he's just kind of a typical teenager, and he don't care. But then Allison works on him. Um, so we, anyway, they're showing off in Pentos and Essos, and they're you know Damon's thinking about just making a life for there. He's really lost at this point. Damon's kind of lost. Um, he's you know nowhere near the throne anymore. Brother hates him. All this kind of stuff. Uh, I think he definitely cares for Lana, but he's really cold, and he seems to be kind of shut off to the world. Uh, so he considers this offer they made him. Um, as far as the uh, Lord of Pen Lord and Pentos, there um, we see uh, we, they discuss the offer. We see Reyna and Bela for the first time, and then later on, uh, of course, um, Bela wants a dragon like her sister. She doesn't have one yet, and uh, they kind of show that where she's holding the dragon it up. So that's really cool, and that'll come into play as well. Although. They're a little too young to participate in the main parts of the dance and all that stuff as well. Um, let's see. Um, we see the King Landing Yards, training yards. We have Sir Chris and Cole. He's training Harwin Strong's out there. And, you know, he, he's a city watch guy, but he's – I don't know why he's there, but it's like it's to build this tension. They know he's the dad and all this kind of stuff. So he sees basically that, you know uh, – Basically, Kristen Cole's a dick, and he's not treating Rhaenyra's kids the same, obviously. Bad idea to have him train them anyway, you would think, after the scorn, scorning and whatever's going on for 10 years, but we didn't see all that. So he's not treating them the same as he is Aegon and Aemond, and Harwin points that out, and uh, he has them fight, and then he teaches him to keep on beating his ass while he's on the ground and with a training stick, training sword, and then he goes... And he breaks his fucking face. So break bones never became break bones in this episode. I thought that was interesting. Um, that's what happens in the books. They reversed it. So uh, Kristen Cole gets his ass beat, uh, which I thought was outstanding, uh, by Harwin. And uh, Harwin never really became break bones. I don't know why they didn't include whatever there they could have earlier, I guess. But whatever. Um, and then we go... I like the little touch here with Renera taking the secret passage after they heard what happened in the yard. So that's now a thing. You know, all the whispers are traveling through the castle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you hear Lionel talking to Harwin and, uh, you know, about, you know, look, people have eyes. They know the truth. Uh, you can't hide it. You know, they're clearly, they're clearly your kids and you took up for your kids, which, you know, he did the right thing, obviously. Um, but they, this whole political world, they have to keep that secret. So now, now, Lionel feels like he can't be handed the king. He can't, like, sir, because he actually is a good guy who, like, literally the only one who gives him legit advice as far as Viserys, as, as opposed to Otto Hightower. Now, obviously, now it's now set up for Otto Hightower to come back, and that's what's going to happen. Just minor spoiler warning, sorry, uh, but, you know, you clearly you see what's happening if you saw this episode. Um, so... Uh, that whole thing goes down. He ends up, uh, you know, basically admitting they're his kids. They really didn't make an effort in this episode to even challenge that in any way, besides just saying it ain't, tr it ain't true as far as Rhaenyra. Uh, we see Lanor shows up uh, drunk with Carl Corey. Uh, this is his uh, current boyfriend, lover, whatever you want to say. Obviously, we know Lanor's a gay dude, uh, and they made this agreement last episode to, like, get married, do their thing, do their duty, but they can do their own things. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? Um, so, anyway, we see Carl Corey show up, and then uh, we'll see him later on as well, I believe, assuming they do some book stuff. Uh, so, we see Lanor kind of, and, and Lanor, I thought, I thought he was uh, kind of odd, like, at first, I like the fact that he came in there with Rhaenyra, and he helped, she, he helped her walk to the queen's chambers and all that but then later on he just wanted to leave like i want to go i want to go back to the stepstones and fight because remember he took part in the stepstone the war of the stepstones in uh earlier episode um which is a definitely a change from the books but he just wanted to leave and go fight and renee was like no i command you to stay now because you can't leave your family we're in this together all this stuff so um anyway uh interesting interesting there to see that that little aspect of him but then uh, it's cool to see him holding up his end of the, the deal as well. Um, let's see. So she turns that around on him later when there's time to go to Dragonstone as well. Uh, yeah, a break bones in your name, broken bones. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's like they kind of skipped that. That's kind of um, – yeah, they kind of just skipped the whole thing. Uh, Becky, Lenore is not is unconcerned. Those boys aren't. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he is, but uh, I, I didn't know how they would uh, do his character because I really 
liked his character as the younger Lenor uh, fighting and all that, and I liked him last episode. And I did like the character. I didn't don't dislike him, but I thought that was odd for him to take off. And he understands that you know these rumors are happening, and this is his wife and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, thank you, Jake from State Forum. Appreciate it, man. I went and got some uh, some new clothes the other day, actually. Um, so anyway, um, so let's see. Um, we go to Raina, and this is what I was saying earlier. I mentioned this. Raina wants her egg to hatch. We see Lena and Raina talking, and uh, she's trying to heat this dragon head up. She will get a dragon uh, eventually. Um, uh, she her sister. Uh, now they didn't show this, uh, but Bela is already writing. Moon Dancer, and then uh, Reyna will have Morning, and um, that will be from, I believe, Cyrax's clutch. Uh, so I guess that's the egg she's got. I don't know if they'll show that or not, because she essentially had a dragon hatch, but it was uh, it died really early, like a few minutes after. So she's like saying, you know, uh, I, I thought it was interesting. She meant, she mentioned Father Ignores Me. I thought that was interesting. I don't see Damon. Damon seems to care for his kids. Um, but then she mentioned her, you know, father ignores me and it's like, because she don't have a dragon or something. So, um, anyway, Damon overall didn't have much to do with this episode, but he just seems like lost at this point that he's just over there. Like, um, I, I'm sorry, I'll get these super chats in just a second. I uh, appreciate it. Um, so, uh, we go to the small council, uh, Renera, look, look, she's sitting there like she has no plans to kill anybody. You know, the whole thing with Allison running her mouth and worrying about all this stuff. She's just doing her thing. She shows leadership. She's making good points. And Allison, why is she on the council? I don't know. Um, I don't know uh, why she's on the council, but it's fine, whatever. That's fine. Uh, queens are typically not on the council. Uh, this is not a book thing. Uh, it's just a show thing. Um, but I thought it was cool that Renera apologized to Allison. Like, she tried to make peace right there. Like, look, I know there's been some shit with our houses and what she's referring to is their kids picking on each other and stuff that kids don't like each other because they they're strongs and brown haired and plain looking and not valyrian and the whole thing um and then uh she offers a marriage from uh Jaceres to helena uh i thought that was interesting so she tries to make peace and allison's just a cunt <laughs> sorry um and like says we'll consider it thank you for the offer and then so yeah and, and tells Viserys on the way out like not marrying my kid to one of her plain looking kids. I mean, you know, it's just full, full bitch mode. Um, but Viserys is just weak and old now. And, uh, he's, he does stand up to her a bit, but I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's pretty feeble. Uh, we see Lionel come in and resign. Hey, again, he's a, actually a good dude. I think an honorable guy who actually realizes I can't, uh, give you the reason, but I can't really give you straight advice anymore because, my uh, situation going on and Allison wants him to say it out loud and he can't say it because he knows she knows the deal he knows the deal but uh, Viserys refuses and says nope you're not leaving but uh, gives him permission to to, to take his uh, son Horan back to Harrenhal because he's going to be lord there Um, so we see that kind of set up and then we see the clubfoot come in as we mentioned earlier on Uh, basically he's serving as a whisper to Allison whispering in her ear like Varys would um, and goes to the black cells and cuts out the tongues of these handful of people. And then when Lionel and Harwin go back to Harrenhal, obviously they're the ones who go in and purposely set the fire. So this is a book thing, but we weren't sure from the book if it was an accident or whatever. It just was, it was called an accident. Mushroom said it was other things. Uh, Mushroom said, I believe he even blamed it on Damon. Um, but, uh, it, we did get confirmation at least for the show that, uh, that, you know, it is actually, uh, on purpose, they killed essentially killed his own family, so the queen could bring back her dad as hand of the king. So she'll now send a raven to Otto Hightower, I suppose. Um, so the clubfoot playing a bigger role than we expected here. Um, we see the birth of uh, Lena's given birth. This is a stillborn um uh baby, and then this is a big change. Uh, she would have died here, uh, like I think it was like an hour after the stillborn birth uh, in the books. But this time, she she went out like a fucking champ. Like I don't know why she ran out there anyway, because I don't think she would have necessarily died. I, I maybe, but I, they didn't do the they would like Damon didn't make a decision on like the they, it was kind of a parallel to episode one. He asked if the mother would survive as far as the, using the blade to get the baby out, whatever, but he didn't make a decision. He didn't look any way. I didn't feel like he was going to do it. 
Um, and then he goes after her, but she, he goes out there to Vagar, Lena does, and says Dracara several times. And Vagar is like, no, I don't want to. Why are you telling me this? I don't know. Um, and eventually Vagar does it. And as Damon runs out, Lena, you know, looking for her. And I was just like, no, what is, you know, even though I knew she had to go, I just like, oh, it was so bad, man. Because I really liked her and we only saw her one episode. Um, so obviously this is going to open up some things. We have Harwin gone now out of the way with Renera, and now Lena's kind of gone now really quickly, like in and out one episode really liked her as Lena, by the way. Um, so I hate, we had to see her one episode, but now you can see kind of things opening up. We have a free dragon now, Vagar, and we have Aemond obviously who doesn't have a dragon. So you can see what's going on. Uh, so a lot of stuff happening in this episode that really are, are really pushing this forward fast. Um, we see that Jace kind of knows the truth. Uh, I believe he's basically saying, is he my father? <coughs> I'm sorry, Lu, uh, Lucerus. <coughs> I mean, sorry, it is Lucerus asking, is, is Lionel Strong my father, or is, uh, Break, is, is Breakbones my father? And she just says, basically, you're a Targaryen, that's all that matters. So, obviously, he kind of knows the truth. Obviously, he's heard all the rumors, and they've been picked on for all these couple, couple years now, probably. Um, so we see the dudes, we actually see the Heron Hall fire. Uh, that's what it was last week that I mentioned in the preview. Um, didn't need to see much more than that. Lionel and Harwin gone, burned up by these dudes from the black cells that had no tongues. Uh, they, they scrolled down, showed the little, like a beetle thing on their, uh, I don't remember that, uh, anything like that from the, must be a show only thing. Um, but the clubfoot killed his own family just to help out the queen. And he says, I'm sure you'll reward me later. And, you know, at the end, you know, uh, I don't understand why Allison's acting shocked. Like, I didn't wish for all this. It's like, yes, you did. This is what you're calling for. All the shit you're bitching about is calling for violence and death and war. And then he goes and kills somebody to get your father back. And you don't, you didn't call for that. You don't understand what happened. Give me a fucking break. What do you think is going to happen with all the rumors you're starting? I mean, and that's not a rumor. It's the truth. But what do you think is going to happen Allison, you know, this is so I'm, I can be my full on uh, team black self now because Allison's now a fucker. You know, she's beyond she's beyond my sympathy anymore. Um, but you see about Sarah's missing Emma, uh, obviously. And then you have the club foot voice over the end. And this will set up Otto Hightower to come back, obviously, because now there is a new spot open for hand of the king. So anyway, there it is. There's the quick, uh, uh, quick breakdown. Um recap whatever you want to call it open discussion now crazy as hell um good episode moved a lot along introduced a lot of people so i know uh, it may be confusing for a lot of people who have not read the books to have a 10-year time jump and then have like um several new characters um just kind of thrown in your face really quickly uh, let me see here. I got a couple of super chats. Uh, thank you guys. I apologize. I was trying to get through that. Hairless Oyster, thank you. Uh, appreciate the, uh, hadn't seen you in a while, man. Uh, welcome back, dude. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Have fun. Be well. Stay hydrated. Thank you, man. I uh, appreciate that. And then Randy Sweet Matsu, thank you for the super chat. It seems stupid or naive to have several kids with someone distinctly different than the actual father. At least one should resemble dad. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, um, but it's, it's the same in the books. They're all three the same. It's clear as day. And all they have to do is say, no, it's just. Uh, and, you know, Viserys is right. He's told Allison, he's like, you know, you had this silver horse and it went and had this black steed. And then they had a brown, plain brown uh, mare when it was born. Uh, nature just sometimes works that way. But, you know, and of course, they don't know genetics and DNA and all that kind of shit. But, yes, uh, clearly you're going to have some. One of those kids, while it's certainly possible for actually to ha her to have brown-haired kids with a, Val a Valyrian, one of those kids is going to look like them. White hair, something. Obviously, in his case, he's going to have darker skin. I mean, something, especially with the change in the show where you have, uh, you know, Lenor being mixed. I mean, clearly, it's not just the hair, it's the skin, all the things. So it's even more, like, ex exaggerated with uh, the differences between the kids. But clearly... Uh, they didn't really even try to hide the fact in this episode. Um, Renair is just like, no, no, uh, they're they're not. Uh, these are vile rumors. <laughs> and then even Lenor's like, what do you mean? I mean, they knew each other's, you know, lovers and all that whole thing. So they they were both holding up their end of the bargain with the marriage. So anyway, um, really, really good episode. Um, 
Carol Brown, Allison with a shocked Pikachu face. Yeah, exactly. He's like, no, I didn't mean for you to kill anybody. What do you mean? Like, what do you think is going to happen here, Allison? You know, what do you mean? You've been running your mouth for years now about her kids. Leave her the fuck alone. And you now you don't you don't think that when something's going to be done about it, people ain't going to die. So this is what I mean, man. So Allison's in full fuck her mode. Um, as far as I, as far just me personally. What's up, Peach? How are you? Uh, same as how they figured out Cersei's kids were not. Yeah, exactly. In those days, it was like, you know, the seed is strong, right? That was the whole thing. Uh, Targaryen features are recessive. Uh, Valyrian features itself are recessive. They set this up. This is clearly clearer from the books with Jon Snow. I mean, um, the northern seed is strong. Uh, over, you know, Rhaegar, he did not look like Rhaegar. He looked like Lyanna. There was this, this, this is what happens generally. There are, you know, we know that in modern genetics, the things can skip generations and blah, blah, blah. But yes, yeah, clear as day. Um, what's up, Jessica? Oh, Jessica's now team, officially team black. So now people can see now what I was saying kind of earlier, why I'm team black. I didn't want, I mean, I probably spoiled a few things here and there, some minor stuff, but now you kind of see, um, she, you know, she's, she's, she, she believes all this bullshit that her dad told her. Uh, and Renary can see clearly. Of course, you know, she doesn't know that she wouldn't do anything when she came to power. But, of course, we know from her, the character, and that's where we get the benefit of being in the audience, is that, uh, you know, she um, she was not going to ever harm anybody or kill anybody. And uh, she want, she offered, like, uh, hey, let's, let's, let's get this fixed. Let's make, you know, we used to be friends, all this kind of stuff. So... Now you now you kind of respect Renair even more, um, but it is kind of dumb, obviously, to keep playing this game. Uh, Paula Rose, thank you for the super chat. I don't think Allison is ready to f uh, fully play the Game of Thrones, and Lord Clubfoot is Allison on his personal show. exactly. Paula, I'm glad you said that. Thank you for the super chat for the twenty. Appreciate it. Exactly what I was going to say a minute ago when I was kind of ranting about Allison. Um, she's going to be my new uh, Catelyn Stark, by the way. Uh, just saying. Um, uh, you know, you know, so she's not ready. She thinks she's ready, but she's not ready to play the Game of Thrones. I mean, she's just not clearly with her little shock face, like Carol said. Um, no, I didn't say any. Did I say any spoilers, Carol Brown? I said before, I baby, I, I said I, somebody mentioned before. I'm Team Black now. Um, Didymus, Twin Gemini. There's another one. Um, let's see, Jessica. It's like Allison is a different actress, but a different character. I agree. I don't like. I like the way she's playing her, but there's not any of the old Allison left with the big time jump. Um, it's hard to go from those two to the adults now. I, I mean, Renera even. Um, she's still defiant and all that stuff, and they clearly set that up. So she's very, she's similar. But yeah, Allison does feel like a whole different person. Um, there's none of the other little innocent Allison left and all that stuff. Uh, and so that's where the disadvantage is of missing out on 10 years is like we don't know any more of the, you know, it was pretty quiet overall, but these things started to happen with her, with the marriage and stuff. Uh, Lady Jen, hello, Lady Jen. Thank you for the super chat. Dance of the Dragons, Blacks and the Greens. And yeah, they they didn't... The, the, I guess they're changing the whole thing with the blacks and the greens. So they did the, they did it last week with Allison at the at the wedding with the green dress. So she went full on Allison last week as a younger version, I guess. Um, one second here. I uh, don't know where is that. Um, one second. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. What what is uh what is this one? Um okay. All right. I don't know why that's broken. Oh well. All right, uh, Dark Angel, he's too old to put the queen in a place. Yeah, you can tell that that's a big difference, too, Dark Angel, is she's a lot more, like, obviously, she was still a little young. She was young, and she didn't, you know, want to back talk the king or whatever. 
obviously they they had some kind of decent relationship as not just purely political that was why uh, he chose her in the first place um but she's now clearly just openly saying look you're you know you keep telling me not talk about it so she she's back talking she's back talking to king now her husband but they're they're close enough for all that now i guess but um uh peach her voice the underbite her sassiness all gone and the nose is wrong um you t- oh you talking about yeah uh yeah Renera, yeah i agree uh, it's 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 a big i didn't think about it at first but after get, kind of getting into the episode the more the more um scenes with each i started to think yeah this this is uh it's um it's not quite the same right they're not quite the same like you feel like they're different people um let's see here uh, Musi, uh, thank you for the question uh, on the. I did a little uh, post. I got a Patreon post as well. I did a little post uh, earlier on uh, for members only. For let's see, Musi, uh, you are first. Uh, it's only been twelve years. Some actors are the same as some, like twenty years older. Just hope the actor remains as good. Uh, yeah. So this was a ten-year jump, Musi. Uh, I think uh, I believe they actually stated. Yeah, they always have to state like they said a decade or whatever. So maybe it was technically twelve or something, but. Um, uh, Fred Hampton, um, what, or is my hero, whatever, if Saris is a pussy, he could just King Henry her ass. I was thinking the same thing, man. Like at some point you gotta, you gotta stand up for your daughter. Um, so <laughs> I agree. I don't know, uh, I don't know why. Um, but you know, he's, he's, that's the whole thing with Viserys is his whole thing is just keeping the peace, just keeping the peace and keeping this, you know, uh, I want everybody to be happy. Like he says in the hallway, he's like, um, just let's just, uh, put this little shit behind us type of shit. You know what I mean? So, uh, let me finish real quick. Why is this? I don't know what it's doing. Um, why didn't it put this back there? Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Uh, nope. Nope, sorry, sorry. Wow, this is always broke. I apologize. I was just... That was bugging the shit out of me. I'll just throw it up there. Out the way. Uh, All right. All right, so let's see. Let me go over here. Where is Patreon? Let me move this over here so I can see. Uh, Carol Brown has some posts here on Patreon. Thank you, Carol. Can someone please, <laughs> I guess you, oh, this was like three hours ago. So you were, <laughs> you were already, uh, you're already, uh, talking like live tweeting like you usually do during the episode. Can someone please, hold on, let me shut this down over here a little bit. Um, someone please give a Sarah some Vaseline, Neosporin, <laughs> Newman's own grayscale dressing, something. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they went with, uh, what I say last week they went with, I think they confirmed that, um, uh, they changed this from the books as far as his his illness. Uh, Carol, also, how did Sir, I done lost my damn mind, Cole switch up like that? Did the Targaryen boot knock and rock and <laughs> his common sense of self-preservation all fine? I mean, damn. Yeah, exactly. So, obviously, he uh, the rejection just, uh, just, I mean, he was, he was loved, he was love drunk, man. I'm telling you, Carol. He done went full, full Allison now. Um, uh, Carol, okay, Carol, again, 30 minutes ago, what did Allison think was going to happen to Sir Snitch on Cole as a grass and the snake? Um, yeah, I know exactly. We, we just covered that. Like, what does she think is going to happen with all these rumors that she's talking about? You know, she wants it known. She wants something done about it. Uh, she wants Aegon named heir. What does she think is going to happen? People are going to die. Um, uh, Carol, Lena's de- death was epic, but how, but how will it change Damon? Uh, that's a good question. We'll see what they do with show Damon. Um, certainly different from the books. Uh, Lena just dies after childbirth, like an hour later after that stillborn. Um, and so it, it, it was, I like the idea that she went out with a, with a bang, so to speak, literally, but it, it was, it, and it was sadder. I mean, it was sadder for sad for sure. Like seeing it versus reading it. You're not really connected. You don't know a lot about the characters. So I, I like that, but I don't know that she needed to do that. Um, like if if they thought that she was because Damon they didn't make a decision on the whole like C section thing they wasn't going to do that again I guess 
So I guess it was just for you know her the call back to her saying I want to go out like a dragon rider, um, but it wasn't quite the same. So it was definitely sad. I was like, no, why are you doing this? There's no need to. You're not. You're fine. I mean, you may lose the child, but yeah. Uh, so I was I was yelling at the TV, Carol, uh, and Jessica. Thank you, Jessica, on Patreon. Uh, was the thing pinned on the random criminal's chest? Their dried tongues. Oh, that's a uh, maybe. Maybe I didn't. It looked like little beetles to me, Jessica. I didn't catch. The dried tongues, but maybe I'll have to. Look. It looked like beetles. I just caught it for a second. That's a good, uh, good idea. Good idea. Good observation. If that's the case, because I don't remember anything. This is not like in the books. You don't get any of that stuff. Um, Nicole. Yeah, this could be Nicole Warden. Um, this is a good idea too. Um, why am I hitting that? Uh, sorry. Um, Nicole saying, I really felt it was an act of love. She didn't want Damon to have to make that decision. That may, that may be, that's a good idea, Nicole. That's a good, a good way to think about it. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. Actually. Um, that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, I just, it was like, I don't know. You, you, she wasn't in like, you know, immediate danger, certainly dangerous situation, but I don't know. I mean, it was a good, it was a cool way to do it, but it's kind of like a little early. But I mean, I know she had to go just based off the story, so why not make it cool um, and even sadder? I really like that Lena uh, for real. Like you know, in the in the books, you don't you get you don't you don't get the depth of these characters. There's not dialogue. You don't really know them that well. You don't really have a feel. You just kind of it's like a history type book, obviously. Um, now you get a little bit of Damon and Princess and the Queen and the Rogue Prince and all that, which is separate short stories. But um, anyway, um, that's a good way to think about it, Nicole. Uh, let's see, uh, Pakti, uh, Pakita. I'm sorry, a couple of issues here. I'm in the book. Uh, Basir spoils Ray terribly, and he counted her to continue to allow her to do whatever. He made her a queen in the name only. He did not prepare realm for uh, to uh, to rule the realm. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> he did keep her around court in the books, though. He did keep her there. Um, somebody asked earlier, I'm sorry, I was going to mention it um, earlier. Somebody said, why didn't uh, she go to King's Landing, Renera, go to Dragonstone a lot earlier? Yeah, I agree, she should have. Usually, uh, she is, uh, you're named, uh, if you're the heir, you are a prince or princess of Dragonstone, and that's where you live, that's where you rule. And you essentially, you know, learn through ruling that castle and that that little realm or whatever you want to call it, as opposed to King's Landing. But uh, it is stated that he kept, you know, Renera was there in court, um, but it never technically the council is not mentioned, I don't believe. So, yeah, but she after being there for a while, she should have went to Dragonstone and been away from all the stuff with the rumors because now her kids are, are running around King's Landing. But that's how they that's how they have to. It starts the issues between the kids, which only um kind of exacerbates that between the parents. I hear a storm. I think I hear a storm. Um, uh, Doc Holliday, guess with Otto and Laris, we're going to give the middle finger and little finger. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the club foot, bigger role here than uh, than expected. Um, so he's definitely playing uh, Master of Whispers. Um, so, uh, Bianca Grisco, will Damon go be with Renera now? Uh, I'll leave that for you to decide. I don't want to go any further. Uh, I think it's fairly clear. Um, but you can see the openings now, you know what I mean, uh, with everything. And some dragons uh, changing hands and stuff like that as well. Um, but, yeah, if you got that impression, you know, probably, probably, uh, probably listen to your gut. Uh, Diane, how is Riddick and poor, poor cat hole? Riddick is good. He's back here. He's chilling back here. He's doing pretty good. Um, thank the Lord. And, uh, so it was, um, oh yeah, Carol, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I didn't think I was crazy. I saw the beetle too. Dub him Lord Beetlejuice. We, we can use that for sure, Carol, for sure. Uh, Diane, yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, cat hole's good. Riddick's doing really good uh, now. So hopefully we're through the worst of all this and, uh, we can get back to normal. Um, he looks like a turkey right now because his neck is still shaved from surgery, but it's starting to grow back a little bit. So, um, uh, if I, I guess it, I, I mean, uh, knock on wood, it's all good now. But he's healing. His uh, he's uh, on meds. I'm starting to wean him off medic some medication now. He's only on two, and um, now the issue is he's lost about 12 pounds of muscle in the last month, and I gotta get him. I'm, I'm, 
trying to get him some exercise every day, and he's really weak now um, in the back, especially his rear legs. So that's the thing now we're working on. I need to get him doing squats, which I actually have tried, have tried to get him to do. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to build his – he's got to get some muscle built back up. He had a lot of atrophy, and then the steroids uh, also don't help with that. Uh, anyway, he's doing good. Thank you. Um – Let's see. Uh, Killmonger, Clubfoot is a dangerous person I see. The quiet ones Killmonger always are. It's like in the book, he is more of a, like he said it last week, I believe he mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, he mentioned something about, I just prefer to like watch. You know, he's just an observer. He doesn't say a whole lot, but you see now why. He's, uh, he's, he sells, he, he's basically playing with information. He knows the game. Um, so, yeah, he's a lot more dangerous than we thought for sure. Um, Nobi, hello, Nobi. Someone better get the dragons. Just saying. Um, yeah, and so obviously you're going to see now we, you know, like Vagar, man. Why would Vagar? Why would she? Why would Vagar burn Lena? Well, I mean, she didn't want to. She was clearly going, "What? Like, no, mother type of, you know, got that vibe." Um, so now Vagar is like without a rider. And obviously, you saw somebody else in the show that uh, did not have a dragon. So, uh, Sith Dog, which dragons will we see in the pit? Um, we're going to see a lot of in the pit. So, this time you saw, um, in this case, you saw Arax. Uh, so, you know, and this is not spoiler stuff, really. I've done a video on the dragons, but there's not any story stuff. But um, Deserus rides Vermax. So you saw that. So, that was, uh, see, that's the thing. Vermax was never really described. So it looked like to me that we saw we thought it was Sunfire. Sunfire is the golden dragon which Aegon will ride. So apparently he's already got Sunfire. So we didn't see Sunfire. It was actually Vermax, like I said. I said it could be in the in the preview video last week. So Jaceris will ride Vermax. As you saw him, he went in there. He was uh, basically claiming him at that point and gave him some commands. Told him to stop. Told him to burn the sh the, the goat or whatever and or the sheep and eat. Lucerus will ride Arax, so we'll see Arax, and then we'll see Joffrey eventually, when he's older, ride Taraxes. That's uh, but you know, obviously they're too young, so I, we, those are later um, in the dance. But he's he's obviously gonna be very young. Uh, and then you have Bela and Reyna. You got uh, Moon Dancer for Bela, which she's already got, and then Reyna, as I mentioned at this point in the show, doesn't have a dragon, but eventually that egg will hatch and it will be morning. Um, morning will be that dragon. And that is a, uh, a clutch from Cyrax. And it, uh, Rhaenyra kind of mentions, like, offers a dragon egg from Cyrax to Allison. So I don't know if that was just a tie in that uh, as well. Um, and then for anybody wondering, just uh, to throw this out there, um, because it doesn't, it's not really a spoiler, obviously, Lena's kid that was stillborn, um, that, you know, obviously she went and, you know, got the uh, <laughs> dragon treatment. Um, so this is going to be a, a closed casket. Uh, obviously, um, we saw that in the, in the teasers and, you know, I couldn't say who that was obviously, but, um, that was going to be Visenya. Um, that would have been Visenya, uh, I believe is the, was stillborn. Uh, I believe that's correct from the books. I believe it was Visenya. Um, uh, I think it was Dreamfire, Steve, Steve Emilio. Uh, I don't, we don't know if that was Dreamfire in the show, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if somebody remembers, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that in the books, um, uh, Eamon got turned down by Dreamfire. I believe it was mentioned really quick. I, I believe I remember that correctly. I could be wrong, but I don't know of that particular dragon in the show. If we saw that was Dreamfire, I didn't. I couldn't. It was just dark. Um, but he just kind of got scared off, so I don't really know if that was considered turning down or whatever, but it's, uh, refused. Um, so maybe I guess they can consider that, but now we kind of know he's really after a dragon and now we have one available, obviously. So, um, but yeah, I believe that's supposed to be dream fire, but I didn't, I couldn't see, I couldn't see the color. Um, uh, Tania, uh, Q and a is Allison's daughter, a green seer. Uh, she seems to have predicted Eamon's one uh, uh, eye loss, asking for LeVar. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, sorry, LeVar. I saw that earlier. I was trying to grab it. I lost it. Thank you. Um, there, oh, there, there's LeVar Hollis. Um, is Allison, uh, is Allison, Allison's daughter a dreamer? She predicted Eamon's eye loss. 
this is this would be a show thing only uh, if if they if she is. I can't remember the line. I did notice the line was foreshadowing, but I don't know her actual like what was the actual word she spoke. I don't I don't know if um the actual word she spoke was like he what what did she say? Does anybody remember the actual line? But this would be new. Um yeah. This would be new for the show. This is not a uh, a book thing to my knowledge. Um uh, uh, Lady Eternal, thank you. Let me go up here and grab the super chat I meant to grab. Uh, Lady Eternal, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then uh, we got also another one. Uh, one second. Oh, uh, actually, actually, yeah, I'm sorry. Frazzled, thank you, Frazzled, for the super chat. Hold on, Lady, I will grab that one too. Um, finally, a legend brought to life. Vagar was amazing. I just wish you could have seen uh, how Lena claimed her. Yeah, they they really should have showed that last couple episodes um i wanted to see that too uh, apparently there may have been a scene in episode two where they cut that out so that will be a dvd extra if that's the case uh but thank you frazzle for the super chat uh lady eternal um thank you for the 20 uh stark contrast damon refusing to make the choice for lena so she gets to choose her death in this episode versus viserys choosing to have aim a butcher like a sh uh, like sharon tate in episode one lena got to make her peace Ama died in fear. Yeah, I, I definitely think that was the idea. Um, cause uh, she she ran out, and I was the, my first thought though was why? Because it didn't show him making a choice or like you know he she went there and he seemed concerned about her, um, and it just just the look on his face and that's all we saw. Um, so anyway, they were definitely using that as the uh, contrast for sure, kind of doing the opposite of his brother. <laughs> Okay, he will close one eye. Okay, okay. So that's uh, LeVar Voodoo. Uh, thank you, Voodoo. What's up, Voodoo? How are you? Um, he has to lose an eye. Uh, I don't want some. I'm sorry. Um, okay, she has, he has to close an eye. So, yeah, that will be something new, um, completely new. Uh, he, uh, I don't, yeah, he, he said close. She said, she said close, right, I believe, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna make that. She is a little different, but she's not don't don't have any green seer abilities or dreamer abilities, so to speak, that we know of. But maybe, maybe she's the next uh, version of Isera since they're making this kind of a show thing. As far as like uh, the occasional, you know, this all started with Danny's the dreamer. Uh, she was the first, and she's the one who got the Targaryens out of Dodge or helped. Um, uh, her father made that decision from old Valyria, but uh, yeah, this is all new stuff as far as the dreamer aspect of things. So, um, it may be so. If she said he has to close an eye, she just kind of said it real subtle, like you know, didn't even you know bother looking back. I mean, like I don't know, but she was talking about that worm thingy centipede that she was looking at. I don't know. If, I'll have to watch it again. I thought at first that at least she was talking about that thing, about how many eyes it had or something. So was she talking to the about the worm things, like focused on that, and that happened to be what she said, which obviously is foreshadowing. Either way, it's foreshadowing. Um, Jennifer, good night. Have a good one. Thank you for hanging out. Good night, good night. Uh, Jenny of Coastal, I'd like to see more of Lane and Damon's relationship. Yeah, same here. They had a... A little bit of it. Clearly, there was uh, some 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 love there. It wasn't just a political thing. Um, but Damon's also in this place right now. Apparently, he's lost and kind of being stubborn. Where she was, she came out that one time. I thought that was a good little scene where she was like, you know, maybe I haven't been the wife I was supposed to be or something. So clearly, because he says something about I have you, well, you know, I'd rather be over here where it's quiet. I can't sleep because I have you. I can't remember the line exactly. Um, you in my ear all the time or whatever. But so there was a little, like he's um, a little bitter now, but it feels like to me, at least the way they did it, that there was definitely um, a pretty decent marriage for, for a while. Um, and then the line about father doesn't father ignores me. I thought that was odd. So, and, and we just didn't get enough details now. So now we'll know hopefully more through uh, Lena. Uh, I'm sorry, Raina uh, and Bela. What's up, John? Hey, Maker, how you doing, man? Uh, good night, Don Harris. Have a good one. 
something about the last ring has no legs. Yeah, I have to watch that again because they were talking about eyes and all that kind of stuff with that that thing she was holding. So I wonder if it was something like that. Um, check super chat again. Did I miss something? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Greenleaf again. I'm sorry. I I thought I'd I know I read that earlier. I'm sorry, Greenleaf. Thank you. Um, Greenleaf, thank you for the super chat. I, so, uh, I'm apologizing. I apologize. I didn't. Uh, I, I, I like in my mind I read that earlier because <laughs> I saw it, but I guess uh, I went, skipped straight to Randy's. Um, again, thank you for the super chat. What a beautiful and intense episode. Got me emotional. Just sending some love. Thanks for being here. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And sorry for missing that. I I I, <laughs> I apologize in my head. In my head, I'd read the uh, the damn thing. I, I, I apologize. Let me let me make sure I don't have any more that I missed here. Did I? Sorry, that was like thirty three minutes ago. I'm sorry, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tinubial Greenleaf. I'm not good at this anymore. You know, we should be good at the streaming stuff. We had thousands of people. <laughs> But it, it takes Carol and Doc and everybody uh, to keep track of shit. Help me out here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Tina, we won't go. We won't go there. We did see Helena this episode, um, obviously, and obviously we're not going to go where major spoilers for that. But we we keep seeing these rats everywhere, and they're looking for cheese. We won't say any more. We won't say any more. That's going to be, that's going to be heartbreaking to see. Uh, let's just say that. Jake is sleepy, everybody. Jake, go to sleep, man. Jake from State Farm is sleepy. <clears throat> um, let me check this real quick. Let me check Patreon. Uh, why is that? Can you stop popping up like that? All right. And then what is... Nope, nope, nope. Not that one. That one. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Um... LeVar, call Rat Catcher from Suicide Squad. Um, they will. They will, LeVar, for sure. There will be a, a Rat Catcher, for sure. Uh, Chicken to Jail, Q&A, will the king now be known as Rat Finger? <laughs> I mean, <coughs> why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Rat Guild in the Castle. Yeah, there's going to be a... That's not just a, an accident for... You know, I know you book readers know... Um, we definitely don't want to spoil that. Um, there, it's not an accident though that there's just rats shown randomly, uh, for sure. The little, little uh, foreshadowing there. Uh, John Haymaker, they need some cats to catch the rats. Uh, that is actually a thing. Uh, that is actually a thing that will come into play for sure. Um, Gregor Smith, besides all my raids, I'm still just a rat in a cage. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Seth Dog. Damon is just preoccupied with what he knows will go down. Yeah, I think uh, I I call I had the feeling again there was nothing stated. It was just how they did the editing and switched back to Renera, right? I got and and she like Lena came came in and said you know Renera gave son uh, birth to another son and Damon obviously knows the rumors too. Uh, and he says, uh, basically, did uh, Sir Lenor actually have one that looks like him? Maybe, you know, so he knows the deal. So I think his thoughts are, we were already there is the way I took it, him being lost. And he didn't want to go home to face all that stuff. But now, obviously, things uh, uh, some things are going to change um, with that as well. So as Renera has the Dragonstone, um, we lost Lena tonight. We lost uh, all that stuff as well, so things will start to change, and he'll uh, he'll see other opportunities. Uh, Betrayed King, what's up, Betrayed King? How are you? Loose the kittens. We're gonna have some. Uh, we're gonna have a a rat and a cat soon enough. Um, 
Uh, AC Burson, I know her husband is is gay, but damn, they couldn't just smash for some children. Most obvious bash that I've ever seen. Exactly, AC. I've always said that too. They actually mentioned that in um, the books. Is uh, you know one of the maester says, or I believe it was maester. I can't remember exactly now. One of the maester says, I don't like fish, but I eat it when I'm served when it's served to me. Um, and I thought that's kind of you know obviously we reading the books you already know. But maybe, uh, I don't, maybe he can't. I don't know. Um, but you would think that they would do that uh, smart thing. Um, and Because uh, all you need is one, right? Like you said, before, we were talking about before. If you just have one of the kids that looks like him and the others may be a little different, who knows? Maybe it's not a big question. But uh, you would think they, uh, they could have done, done the thing somehow or another. I mean, they didn't have turkey basters in those days, I guess. But, I mean, he could have. You know, bring in some help or whatever you got to do. Uh, if that's what you, if you're going to do your duty uh, and, and keep everything, you know, nice and secret. I don't know. <laughs> Nicole, I'm assuming he can't perform. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, that's what, uh, maybe, but got to be a way they can get it done. But yeah, I've always said that too, even from the being, even from reading the books. Um, Doc Holliday, we got another example of HBO attention to detail when they do a series that had to include the squishy sounds during childbirth and afterbirth. Yes, they did. Yeah, they made sure to throw that that plop in there for sure. And the this this you know uh, they they damn sure did. They they did say they were trying to make that a big thing. They were going to highlight it. Um. Uh, yeah, it would be Nicole. They could, they, you know, but I guess uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, Becky. You know what I mean? I mean, if he can't, if he can't perform because he don't like um, women, uh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, they could. Uh, they, but you know, they didn't know that shit back then. I mean, obviously, there's no pullout game <laughs> for anybody. I mean, it's just saying. Let's be real. Um, God, they know what what causes kids, but nobody wants to ever like. You know, you know. I've always wondered. I've said this when we talked about Game of Thrones. Why don't anybody pull out? I don't know why they don't. Anyway, sorry, not to go down that road. <laughs> we we have to go off the rails a little bit here, though. I mean, let's be real about it. Why why does this happen to all the Game of Thrones? I mean, all the bastards, all the all the things. Uh, they know what happens, and they just don't like just just do what you need to do, man. <clears throat> I mean, for Christ's sake, they showed Aegon squeezing one off over the city out the window. I mean, you know. Uh, let's see, Greenleaf, I missed the first. I, mean, I feel if someone, oh, okay, Greenleaf. Uh, I feel that if someone just killed Queen Allison, all this would be for the better, <laughs> and, uh, plus Otto. Uh, yes, um, yeah, and maybe Clubfoot too. No, I, I, I it would. It would absolutely end it, 100%. Kristen Cole would have no more protection. Um, he would be the only one you have to worry about, but, you know, uh, that's he's now firmly on her side because she somehow saved him, but I don't know. And now it turns his rage towards Rhaenyra because he, got, he rode the dragon, then he got rejected for like this crazy idea of flying off and living somewhere and, you know, without, I mean, she still had duties and she offered to continue doing everything they always done just in secret, but whatever, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Sammy, I'm rewatching God and the scene where that douchebag Joffrey was laughing, how Renera was killed. Made me hate that little shit even more, a uh, little shite even more. Oh yeah, exactly. He's a douche. Uh, the biggest, I don't know. Um, Joffrey was psychopath. Uh, I don't know how you, I don't know if you can compare like when we get to, I don't want to say, I don't want to say anything for potential spoilers for some of these characters. Um, uh, Chicken to jail, apparently in Westeros, their couches pull out, but they don't. Yeah, exactly. I've always said that, man. I don't understand it. You hot buddy. I'm gonna let him out of here in just a second because he's hot in this room. This room is over the garage. It's always it's always hotter in here, and he's this medicine makes him pant like crazy. Um, 
Paquita, uh, sir, and his feelings, Cole, exactly. Um, he's all up in him. Um, uh, Bianca, why didn't everyone give him shit for not producing? Um, who are you talking about, Bianca? I'm not sure who you're talking about exactly. Are you talking about Lenor? I'm not, I don't know exactly who you mean as far as producing. Um, yeah, I'll just, yeah, let me know if you clar clarify that. Uh, Cause if you're talking about Lenor, uh, they, he's, he's like, he gets the shit too, uh, book wise as well. Um, and you know, cause it's like, a people, it's like a slap in the face to him in a sense. Cause, uh, he does have this, you know, a little honor with him, you know? Um, Luke in, what do you think Damon's decision would have been in regards to his wife's labor? Well, that's what I mean. They did this for the show. Uh, there was no decision in the books. Uh, Lena um, had a stillborn um, kid, uh, girl, um, and that was there was no decision, and that was that would have been Vicenia. Um, so he has a stillborn daughter, Vicenia, I think, uh, and then Lena in the books again. Uh, that's how different it was. Um, this was for the the show message in regards to what, you know, the difference between that and episode one in the books, there's no decision. It's just a stillborn child. And then there is no decision. So it doesn't really matter uh, to me uh, just for the sake of the show, the look for me when he, he asked specifically, will will she, will the mother survive? And then to me, he looked concerned for her, but I can't obviously know that. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> dot coming out alert just for the tip. Um, yeah, Betray King. That's what I was going to say. Thank you, Betray King. Uh, they had scenes where Damon consoled his daughters, but they cut it from the episode. That's what I don't understand because that's a big thing, man. Like they they showed them on the roof, but there was a shot there where he is like consoling them or whatever. He's sitting down and they're they're sad and whatever. But why are they cutting that out? Um. Uh, cause that is part of his character. Obviously he can be an, a total asshole and he's done horrible things. You saw, you know, the thing with, um, his wife last episode, but he has feelings and he loves his kids and all that kind of stuff. And why cut that out? And that, and, and it reminds me of the line earlier I was mentioning, why would they put that in there for the show? Like, uh, dad ignores me. Uh, that's not the case at all for book Damon, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, of course, you know, we're getting a lot more details that's just not in books. I mean, I guess so. Um, but, yeah, that's weird to to take that out. It's almost to make him look worse. Um, but at least they did show him running after Lena, right, uh, and going, you know, looking for her. And then he's clearly tearing up and just seeing what the hell she just did. Uh, Bianca, yeah, I'm talking about him with not with producing kids. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right, Bianca. Uh, as far as Lane or yeah, he gets shit too, uh, for sure. That's the that's the thing. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where um, they just didn't show enough of like the little because people kind of know they the rumors are always there, right? Um, people did not they didn't show enough of that kind of stuff, right? Of people mentioning to him like, hey. Uh, you know, nice, nice uh, brown haired son you got there. So they they would they would certainly question his quote unquote manhood, right? So they didn't show they just didn't show enough of that stuff. I know Carol, poor Vagar. That was a, that was that was a surprising scene. Even though I knew she had to to go, I just I just assumed I guess I don't, uh, it'd be the same as the book, and um, that was pretty sad. Uh. Uh, let's see, Steve Emilio. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. You're you you are correct. I am. You're you're right. Um, I'm I'm got too much going on in my head. I've been rereading the Silmarillion, and the Lord of the Rings, and then watching this, and I have not read in a while. You're right. So Steve is correcting me. Thank you, Steve. Asenia was not Lena's. Um, oh, one second. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, Vicenia was not Lena's daughter, but rather the daughter born right after the king's death. In the book, Lena Stillborn was a boy. You are correct. Thank you for the correction. Um, 
<laughs> Sammy, <laughs> Lenor has no clue what that hole looks like. No, he probably doesn't. Um, but it's like it reminds me of. Uh, remember, Marjorie came in uh, in uh, in Game of Thrones and said, you know, we got to do our duty type of stuff, right? Uh, and you know, he he didn't care. He didn't he didn't get aroused with her, and she offered to bring in a dude. Um, so yeah, uh, but so Lenor has never even tried, tried it. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, um, could change a dude. Who knows? <laughs> Lenor has no clue. To know. Um, Ebros, uh, her daughter will inherit her dragon. Um, uh, I won't answer that Ebros. I'll just, I mean, most, I think it's fairly clearly set up there. Um, but I, I won't answer it just in case. Uh, but sure, possible. Um, but Trey King, Kristen could not beat Harwin in real life. That was a mushroom t uh, tall tale. Everyone complaining Kristen didn't break Harwin's bones. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. They skipped the whole break bones thing. So, uh, it's just, um, that's the kind of the cool thing about it. Like I kind of expected to see that. I was saying like they, they could have had a maybe a fight where he does get a couple bones broken, and ultimately he does, you know, he still attacked him is all that matters because protecting his son uh, in a way or whatever. But um, I was surprised they didn't do that. Um, uh, but yeah, but th that's the cool thing about trade is not we're not see we're seeing like the show's version of what actually happened again a separate canon. But uh, the books, everything is like unreliable because Mushroom. Uh, some of the things he said it was true. For example, though, uh, he, he he a lot of a lot of his stuff was uh, em embellished. But we saw, for example, uh, it wasn't quite the same. But we saw Heron Hall, right? I mean, Heron Hall was clearly wasn't an accident. And then the, the clubfoot says, you know, well, the place is cursed. He's like a creepy fucker. He was creepier than I imagined. Uh, Matt Tyler, uh, are Corliss and Rainey still involved in the story? Yes. Yes, uh, they will be. Yep. Uh, um, let's see, uh, HLM, uh, hey, yeah, they really aren't giving Damon any more character development other than a self-serving jerk. I don't understand that. I don't mind the time jump, but they're kind of rushing the character story. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, well, I understand what, because they're doing three to four seasons of this era, which I think is probably going to be three at this point. They're moving really fast. Um, they they are leaving out a lot of stuff that, yeah. Uh, but they, they did show Damon's love for Rhaenyra, for example, and some other little things. And he does love his brother, but, and he, like, he, he didn't even deny some of the things said about him. He does care, but they, they skipped a lot of time here, so we don't know what's been going on. Um and so there's a lot of context left out, I think. I think you're right. Because they shouldn't have cut the part out where he's consoling like, like we saw my earlier with, uh, with Bela uh, and all that stuff, um, with, with uh, Raina and Bela, because, y y you know, why put that line in there like father ignores me and then not show? Why cut that out? Obviously, uh, obviously he cares about his children. Um, Sith Dog, who was Damon's female friend who rides? That was his wife, Lena, if that's what you're asking, Sith Dog. That was Lena riding Vagar, the biggest of all dragons at this time. Um, Gene of Cole, so I'm glad he'd get a good beating before he dies. Yeah, I mean, on Kristen Cole. Voodoo Darlin, anyone else get uh, needle vibes from the girl in the dragon pit? Um... I wasn't even. I, I wasn't really focusing on the dragon keeper who was teaching uh, Lucerus Val Val Valerian. That's what I, I really didn't pay attention, so I didn't. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be watching it again though. What's up, Matt Geo? How are you? Um. Oh, oh, you're asking about nettles? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we're not to nettles yet. Wait a minute. Uh, did I miss something? He's burnt bones now. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he is HLM. He is Burt Bones. Um, you don't have to be a real. Uh, you don't have to have to be hard to make a deposit. A real man can beat it out regardless. <laughs> no, I, I know. Um, 
Yeah, no. Are y'all? T- yeah, nettles. Uh, that'll come into play later. Yeah, yeah. That, that I don't know who's mentioning nettles. Um, Sith doll voodoo. Uh, let's see. Oh, nettles vibes. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, from your question, needle. Uh, nettles vibes. I wasn't. I, I wasn't paying attention. I'll, I'll watch it again. But nettles should not be around right now. But um, I'll definitely check it out again. Um, that should be much, much later, actually. Um, uh, Pen Muse. Hello, Pen. How are you? Aegon's happy place window. <laughs> I know. It was, the, it was so weird. Was that the same one Tom and Sw- Swan dove out of? Uh, I, I, that's what I said earlier, Pen. In the very beginning of the stream, I literally said that I got Tom and vibes from that. I didn't, like, pause it there or whatever. I will next time to take notes or whatever or to add to these notes. But... Um, I got Tom and Vibes, so I'd imagine, I, I don't know if it is, I have no clue, honestly, but probably just for the sake of the callbacks, I think it probably would be, but I didn't pause it and compare it to the old pictures. But I, I certainly think that's what they meant to give us there is those vibes, so I'd imagine it probably is. Uh, Sammy, Mushroom was spreading fake news. Yeah, a lot of it, but a lot of it was right. A lot of it was right, too, at least in some way. Um... Uh, Meg Paul, leaving that line in, I would assume it speaks to how much she identifies being a dragon rider with being a targ. She's really bummed about the dragon thing the whole episode. Uh, yeah, I, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, she is. That's a book thing too. She's like she had this dragon, it hatched, but it died really, really like a right after it hatched, I believe. And then her sister has Moon Dancer already, and she wants to be like her sister and be a part of the family and ride a dragon. So you know, kind of like Aemond on the other side, right? Um, so very similar there. But um, uh, and then she's always uh, keeping the eggs. The, uh, she carries eggs around with her everywhere. I think three of them in the books actually, um, and one, and uh, one does eventually hatch. So uh, the the, but she is a bit young. Obviously, by the time she gets a dragon and grows a little bit and all that stuff, she's uh, but she wants to be a part of all this. Is is the idea? <clears throat> Uh, oh, oh yeah, voodoo. Okay, yeah, I wasn't paying. I did see the translator. There was a girl doing the translate. That's why I asked him. She go off nettles vibes. Yeah, no, I'll I'll I'll, I'll watch again for sure. I was wasn't paying attention. I was kind of, I was kind of uh, just. I didn't focus on like the character other than uh, Jaceris and the Dragon Keeper. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Nicole. No, yeah, I, I will do that. I'm I'm going to. Um, in just a minute, I'm gonna take a quick, uh, quick break, and then we'll break down the preview because I, I I never watch these until I watch it with y'all, and then uh, I, I will break it down as usual. Um, mm, Matt Geo, um, what would I rate it out of ten? Um, I never do numbers, man. I don't know. Um. I liked the episode. I thought it was outstanding. A lot went on. It was a lot of information, a lot of new people, a big time jump. They're really moving along fast now because, and I understand it because there wasn't a lot going on for those 10 years. Everything was pretty much just normal. And then the kids got to some scuffles and they'll get into some more, believe me. Um, So I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. It, It didn't. Like my, the the best the scene that really shocked me was the Lena scene with um you know her going out Jakara style because that's completely different uh, from the books but um I don't know I would say a good solid seven I don't know I don't really do numbers because I think there's a lot more I don't know I, I, I don't I've never liked assigning a number to something you know what I mean but I mean if I had to pick one I would say a good solid seven out of ten. Um, because we got some really good political stuff going on, but the the Allison stuff was just a bit kind of in your face. Like, okay, we get it. You don't like Rhaenyra's kids. You think they're plain looking. You know who their father is. But that's all she said. So the clubfoot stuff was really good uh, as far as the uh, kind of scheming. Um, but I don't know. I, I like Allison, how she's playing her. But like we said before, it doesn't feel like there's anything left of old Allison. So it's a hard thing to see the the time jump and then the actors change. And I don't know if I like Emma as good as Renera as I do, did Millie. 
as younger Rhaenyra. And I understand they, they had to change for the time. Um, but I'm, I'm not there yet. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Seven, seven and a half, something, I guess. Uh, that's why I don't really do numbers. Um, hold on a second here. Uh, let's see. Matt Tyler, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Uh, is there something I missed on why Laris was okay burning his family? Anything that happened between them or he did solely as a power? Solely as a power move, to my knowledge. There's not a lot of information. He's kind of a, a, a secret of, um, like he says himself, he just watches people. He don't say a lot. Uh, but to my knowledge, he's like, he's the second son and all that. I don't know any, I don't remember uh, any details as to why he would want to kill his own father. Um, he's always felt like an outcast, I guess, in some way. But to my knowledge, he was never treated bad by his brother or father. So I don't know. Um, if somebody remembers that from the books, you know, feel free to correct me. I don't remember anything about um I don't think, remember thinking about him. I mean, he was called the Clofit, obviously, but not like he wasn't like his brother and father were not like in any way mean to him that I know of other than typical brotherly stuff, probably. But we, we don't have all those details. I remember. Um, Scott of Greywater, Lena death scene was uncalled for. Uh, well, that's what I was saying a little bit earlier, Scott. I don't, I don't know why they did it that way. I, I think it was, cool in a way for her to go out in a way like she chose i think that was the idea she got to choose instead of like um it was it was it was in opposition to the uh the parallel with episode one so i think that's why they did it but it's like um the way they did it, it's almost like well why though she wasn't like for sure gonna die at that point you know what i mean so it, it was kind of a, a tv thing uh, Luke M. Yeah, Lionel was written exactly. He, Lionel Strong is actually a good dude who gave him legitimate advice and never, never lied to him for personal gain and all that stuff. And uh, that's why I respected him for going and saying, "Look, man, I got shit going on now, and I can't advise you anymore." Um, I mean, I can, but it's not. It's going to be uh, tarnished in some way or whatever. But he's like, "No, no, you can't leave." Okay, at least let me take my son back to Heron Hall. He's going to be Lord there. Uh, anyway. Um, let me check over here really quick. Uh, let me just give me a second here. Uh, Sith, though, they just wanted to get used to seeing people burn. Uh, I mean, that's it's not necessarily untrue. That that is uh, that is true. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jason Weeks, what's up, Jason? Isn't there three brothers? Are you talking about Lionel? Uh, no, there's uh, there's the, the the there's the clubfoot and break bones, and then there's two daughters. And then possibly, I think it's Alyssa Rivers as a bastard daughter, but I'm not, that's not really known, I believe. So there's no more strong brothers. There's two daughters that are unnamed, I believe. I don't think they really have a role in the story. Um, Mervin uh, Sanchez, do you think it was risky changing actress halfway through season one? I like this episode, but I wasn't feeling the new Allison Renera. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I think it was certainly risky. I understand they kind of had to do it. Um, I mean, you can't age. I don't know. I guess they could they could have aged them up or something in some way, but maybe that's too much, prosthetics and all that stuff. Uh, it's definitely risky, and I definitely didn't feel like they were the same people. It was because you, it was kind of a jarring 10-year jump, if that makes sense. Hey, Zara, how are you? Um so I didn't, I'm not loving, like, Allison, I like how she's playing Allison, but, like, there's no, there's, I don't feel anything resembling any of the older Allison who still has, uh, I don't know. Um, like, if she was, if I didn't see Allison before as a younger Allison and we started right now, it'd be perfectly fine with her. But after seeing uh, her and then um, Emily Carey and then Millie Alcock as, as Renera, I, I just... I'm still not 100% on the older actresses yet. I 
You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. I'm sure it'd be fine. Um, it didn't like throw me out of it or distract me or whatever, but it's, it's a, it is a little jarring. It is a little jarring. <clears throat> Um, Bangton Nana Chicken, yes, Cersei as fuck. Wait a minute, who? <laughs> oh, Allison. Oh yeah, yeah, Chicken in Jail. Yeah, uh, you Allison gave me Cersei about. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Becky Allison calls two deaths already. Yep, and she's all surprised. Oh, wow, well, I didn't mean that. What did you mean? What do you mean? What do you think is gonna happen? Um. Mervin, they made Brad Pitt look like an old man and Benjamin Button. Sure, they can age them. Too. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, they could. I just maybe I don't know what the th the the decision process was because you they changed. Uh, Lanor was different, obviously. In three, there was three Lanors. There was three Lanas. Um, there was you had uh, obviously Allison and and them, and then uh, you kept Damon. Uh, I don't know if they slightly de-aged him or anything like that for the previous you know uh, decade, two decades. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It, it is certainly a risk, and it, it, it's a little jarring with the time jump, I would say for sure. But uh, I, I don't. I just don't see. Like I know they filmed the younger ones first, so the um, actresses could kind of go off their their uh, versions of them. Uh, and but it's just hard to see any of the old characters in the new ones. Like any of the uh, personality, uh, you can see Rhaenyra's it's kind of the same, I guess, because she's just kind of defiant and does what she wants. But um, other than that, it, it's I don't know. It, it is just a little, it's a little, it's a little off. I would say for me. Uh, Pan Muse, I just wanted to backhand, uh, front hand, backhand, front hand, Allison for an hour. So I know, I, same exact thing, right off the bat. I mean, like immediately. There's no more of the young Allison who still feels something for her friend, and that's why it's such a big kind of shock. Uh, hello, Lady Celtic. How are you? This old woman is getting sleepy. I want to say God bless and good night. Have a good one, Lady Celtic. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Um, uh, JR, do you think they're moving too fast? In other words, skip the time jumps. I would have loved to see more. Um, yes and no, JR. Like, I understand why there's just not a lot to go off of. It would have to be completely made up, like, for 10 years of just, like, nothing really happening and couple, maybe you know you see all the kids being born that you already see now but really no big things they would have to completely make it up which would be fine i guess but it's moving fast now um and this episode i mean we went through lena in one episode we went through uh a couple of things are going to happen and, and basically we're, we're we're to the dance you know um it's not going to be i mean we're on episode six I expect to see for I mean, we got the technically first blood. We talked about this first blood thing a couple of times. Um, I wasn't considering this to be first blood in the actual war uh, as far as the dance itself. Um, so I think we'll probably at least see that in episode 10 is what I'm thinking um, for sure. But um, that will set up once that happens, we're an all out war. So um, it's going to move quickly. So I, that's why I'm thinking they said three to four seasons of this and then it may be an anthology. Uh, we're seeing how fast they're going now, and then if we get to first blood of the war, excuse me, by episode ten, then uh, yeah, uh, we're we're not going to do four seasons. They're, they're, it's going to be three. Uh, yeah, betray king. No mention of Darren. That apparently, that Darren's just not in here. I don't know what they're doing. I was going to say that earlier, betray. Uh, thank you when we were talking about the kids. Becky, good night all. Love you, Chris. Good work tomorrow. Open to any tips you're giving. <laughs> That's just a tip. Thank you, Becky. Have a good one. Thank you for hanging out. Uh yeah, so I will pull up the um if we're if we're if I'll pull up the let me double check Patreon again really quick. I think we're probably good there. If that don't stop popping up. Um all right, and then uh, so what we'll do is I will pull up YouTube. Uh, okay, I have not seen. Let me go to uh, YouTube here. I have not seen the preview for next uh, uh, episode. Uh, there it is right there, episode 7 preview. I'll just get this ready. I won't do this yet. Um, oh, no, no, no. Can't do that. No, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. Um, 
Okay, I already know what that's going to be. So I'll just get this ready here, and then we'll we'll come back and uh, we'll go over um, we'll go over the preview for episode seven. And then I want to say really quick too, guys, before we get out of here, for you guys going to bed, stuff. So I know some of you heading out uh, already. It's getting to be close to midnight. Um, just expect the rest of this season, pretty much uh, as far as videos go. Um, I'll probably just do like I did last week and just do like a, a, a this kind of st a stream style video. I'm not going to try to rush anymore and uh, do a full fledged. Not that I won't say the same things I would say in any video, but. I'm not going to be doing full-fledged edited videos where they take hours and hours to do anymore. I'm just not going to do it. it I, it's just bad for me. Uh, mental health-wise, I'm just going to do like the quick, the quicker versions uh, like we're doing, like this live stream. I love them, but I don't like edit videos anymore. Uh, there's no point in rushing trying to get videos out because everybody's getting screeners. There's already reviews online right now, I'm sure, uh, and really early tomorrow for all the big channels to be able to do that, which is fine. But I can't compete with that, so I'm not going to rush and do, you know, really edited videos anymore uh, for reviews or previews. So I'll just do like the stream style things. Uh, it's easy for me, quicker for me, and saves my men mental health. So just want to be aware of that. So that like last week, I didn't even do a review video because I think this is good enough now, honestly. Um, I, I mean, I'll do them, but I'm not going to do like highly edited crap anymore uh right i just i just can't deal with it right now um got a lot going on i do want to talk the rings of power dark angel i actually am enjoying the show i think i have major problems with it but overall i actually am enjoying it it's not nearly as bad as people think but if you're a tolkien fan you probably hate it like a, a tolkien like hardcore nerd you probably hate a lot of it but there's aspects i do enjoy about it i would like to talk about it but uh, it's kind of too late now um i guess maybe i'll Maybe we'll have a, like in this season live stream or something. I'd, um, anyway, so I was just saying, I uh, just wanted to to mention that. So uh, there, you know, same information. Just it, it just saves me a lot of headaches with uh, editing and then copyright issues and all that stuff. Um, there's no point in trying to rush and get a video out, at, you know, tomorrow morning or something, something like that for a preview or, or review or whatever, because. It's literally the same thing. It's so saturated now, and uh, it's I can't, I can't, uh, I can't keep my head straight with all that shit anymore. <clears throat> uh, Chicken and Jeff, they keep going this fast. The king will need to be played by Keith Richards. <laughs> exactly. Um, Lord, yeah, he looks like dude. He looks like the same white that they showed Cersei. I'm telling you, I, I think he's going to be, that would be kind of cool if he like died of that and ended up being like re, re <laughs> reanimated up north and the whole time that white that they brought Cersei was King Viserys. Uh, he looked just like him. Uh, Reddy, I actually thought about that. Take your first 15 minutes or so from the live stream when you're doing the recap, but um, you try to, I've tried that before, Randy. The problem is, is, you know, it's more of an open conversation and I'm not kind of just going straight point to point. Um, and then I'm reading stuff, whatever. And then I, when I chop it up, it's just a little too distracting. You know what I mean? So I'd rather just kind of redo a shorter version of kind of the same thing, just stream style where I can just have the window up behind me. Uh, just, I'm not going to chop up videos anymore right now. I just, I can't deal with it. Um, got too much shit going on and it's just not, it, it doesn't matter. Honestly. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't, anyway, so I just want to mention that Dark Angel, uh, since you asked, I do want to talk about Rings of Power. Uh, has some major issues with it, especially in the main character. Um, but I also enjoy it um, a, a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, Brandon, there's Brandon. There you go, Brandon uh, Monroe. Um, I'm so impressed with the new actors. <laughs> we were saying, like I was saying, I like them. I like the they're, what they're doing, I think, is great. But it's, it's a little jarring. Uh, I don't see the old actors in them at all. And... Uh, Obviously, 10 years of personality and development is just kind of uh, in your face all of a sudden. So it's almost like uh, they don't have any. Uh, I didn't catch a lot of like any of their uh, older qualities is what I was saying. So it's a little jarring. Princess Scarlet, no, uh, you're right, Viserys. I mean, look, it's clear. There's no spoiler here, right? I mean, Viserys ain't got too long. I mean, obviously, they made that from clear from the get-go. 
Uh, Matt Geo, yeah, man, Chris, just take your time. These videos, man, don't stress it. I'm sure they will be better taking your time posting. Well, I'm just, yeah, I mean, like I'm, I'm just saying, Matt, uh, I appreciate it, man. Um, I'm just not going to try to, like, it used to be Game of Thrones. I was just so hyped and excited about it and everything. Um, and, you know, they were mildly successful. Um, but, you know, you would get done with a live stream and then I would go and immediately start working on the review video and I'd record the audio and then I'd break, the, you know, start editing at least, get it out the next day as quick as possible and then like a review or whatever the day after or whatever. Sometimes both in the same day, I was just constantly just running, grinding, rush, 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 and uh, I just can't do it anymore, man. I can't do it. Um, mentally, it's just, it's just exhausting and it's, you know, we're in the middle of the season here and, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It, everybody's getting screeners and it's not it's not a level playing field anymore which is fine again i'm not complaining that's fine uh, i would i would accept one too um but you have all the bigger channels and and the uh, ones that popped up over the years um they're all getting screeners and they can watch the show early and they can have a video done at 1001 you know so it's just kind of pointless i mean again uh, good on them it's nothing uh, nothing against those channels uh, by any means uh, Peter Griffin, Laris kind of helped Renera as well. Dead people can't confess to not a. You're 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 right, Peter. You're absolutely right. There is that is true. Um, that is true. But it makes it a little sad. He said goodbye to his kids. I mean, we kind of I knew it was kind of happening, but and he said the next time we'll meet, we'll meet as strangers, and it's like eh, you're probably not going to meet. Um, CT, I didn't expect them to be the same at all. Honestly, I know people in real life that were complete opposite from when they were 10 years ago. Huh? No, I agree with that, CT. I mean, but, <laughs> and that's what I mean. That's what, I mean, obviously that's the truth. That's what I'm saying. The time jump is you expect that, but it is still from the, from our perspective, we watched six days ago. Um, right. So it's a little jarring in a sense. Um, but I'm sure a couple episodes, I mean, I'm not, it's like, I'm not saying I hate it. I'm saying, I like those two better as the characters. And even though we're 10 years later, there still should be a, some of those uh, attributes and to some degree besides just their looks, um, how they look uh, similar. Um, so to me, it's just a little, uh, it's a little all for now. But again, once you kind of get that out of your head, like, look, we're, we're beyond that now. Because uh, you, you're seeing the same dudes, right? Like Damon. Obviously, Lainor was different. Lena, all that, but... When you see Damon the same, it's like, eh, whatever. You kind of just got to make it work in your head. Uh, Christian, I did I did watch Andor. Um, I watched it a couple nights ago. I like it, um, but it's boring. It's hell. Uh, I mean, it just is. It's not um, exciting, flashy Star Wars type of story. The story's fine. I like the actual story. It's fine. Um, I think it's um, a pretty standard good story but i don't uh i don't it, i was extremely bored i don't think we need it uh ungoliant what's up how you doing uh i was just thinking about you earlier your name ungoliant because i'm rereading the silmarillion and, and uh getting to that part just about i think i think i'm getting to the uh two trees part but uh yeah that episode was crazy it was a lot of shit going on a lot of shit happened i know you're a little late here so we went all over all that but a um, lot of information thrown at you, a lot of new characters, um, and uh, a lot happening. Moving really quick. Andor is really only one episode. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of felt like that. I mean, it was obviously really, you know, 30-minute episodes. But, no, I liked it. Like I said, I, if it, I mean, I'm, I know it sounds odd that I'm saying that. I liked the show, but I was extremely bored at the same time, if that makes any sense. I eat the trees. Yes, you do. And they kind of just missed that in the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. I know they don't have uh, – that's sort of problem. They should have bought the rights to the things they needed. Anyway. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, Princess Scarlet, Riddick is doing good. So, uh, thank you for asking. Thank you. We were talking about it a little bit earlier. He's doing good. He's laying back here now. I'm going to go let him out. He's hot back here, up here in this room. Um. Yeah, princess, it was just it was just boring. Like I, it, I mean, I, like I said, I liked it, but it it doesn't feel Star Warsy to me. And again, I don't have to have lightsaber battles and blaster fights or any of that stuff all the time. It just felt like a generic 
story about some random dude, which I guess it is, honestly. Um, and I don't think we need it. I think it was just kind of forced. It feels forced to me. But I like it. I know it sounds weird, but I like it. But it, uh, but it was going to be extremely boring to me. Um, it just didn't... Like, I wasn't just, like, in love with the characters or even Andor. I mean, I just... Eh, just you know. So I'll continue watching it. I'm sure it'll, it'll be all right. Um... Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna lie. Andor seemed better than Rings of Power. Yeah, no, it's it's really odd. Like I'm actually, like I said before, I'm I know again I have major problems with the Rings of Power, major problems. Uh, and we're not to get into all that again, but um, I I do have some major problems with the lore. I have major problems with uh, Galadriel. She's insufferable at, at times. Um, but I actually enjoy the show. It's really odd. And then Andor, being me, me being a Star Wars freak, um, I liked it, but I'm bored. Um, it was just kind of meh. But it was again, it's good. And I, it's, it's weird to say. I know. I, I don't. It doesn't sound consistent. I don't even know if it makes sense. But I liked it, but I'm extremely bored with it. So I just don't think we need the story of this one dude or whatever. I guess a good story in itself, how he was rescued from there and all this kind of stuff is what I'm saying, I guess. Um, AC Burson wasn't Renera building an army of allies over the last 10 years. She has to know what's going to happen after her father dies. Uh, not really. Uh, that's the problem is she, Allison already is a, is a, thinks that there's something going to happen if she becomes queen, but Renera's not really like that. That's the problem. Um, and she's going to Dragonstone now. So now like she doesn't, they, it's, that's the problem is Alice and Renera didn't didn't make the move first to let it be known how Allison's talking about her. So yeah, that's exactly the problem, AC. Um yes. Uh oh, Meg Paul is pointing at her clock. All right, yeah. You're right. Um uh Fred Hampton. Uh see there's Fred gets what I'm saying. It pissed me off for something furious. It's slow for no reason. What the fuck? It was it was extremely but again, it's really short episodes, not a big deal. Um Oh yeah, no, right. You're you're right, Meg. No, you're right. I I'm glad you said that. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, they did swear fealty to her. The problem is she thinks is that that's enough. That is a big deal in some people's eyes, which is why she does have support later. Um but she thinks because all these old dudes, you know, 15 years ago now swore fealty to her, that that's enough to just be fine. And it's not. And that's where she fails to realize that people don't give a shit about oaths taken after the king's dead. So she doesn't make a move first. Penn, um, first episode, all I saw and he did was walk around. It's all around. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just walk around talking. So, like I said, I, the overall story so far, I'm enjoying. I get the idea of the story. I like the story, but it's boring. Uh, yep, Otto is coming back for sure, for sure. Uh, Musi, Q&A, uh, Chris, I took Harwin saying baby uh, baby Joffrey. Next time you see him, I'll be a stranger as foreshadowing his death. I actually got that vibe. Um, no, nah, it was foreshadowing his own death. Basically, it was just saying, like, legit, like, literally saying goodbye forever to his own kids. Yeah, that's all. That's all that was. I think. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, Greenleaf. Uh, given how Renero treated Kristen Cole, she could have done the same to Allison. Uh, so it was it was justified for Allison to believe the worst could happen. Um, no, she could, but the thing is, is um, Renera didn't really treat Kristen Cole bad, as my my the way I feel about it. Greenleaf, um, uh, Renera just honestly said, "Look, we can't just run away from my, who I am. Um, I mean, look, we can. I, I got to do my duty. We can still be in love, and it's just got to be a different a, a, a different way in her mind. It's like we can just do this secretly." Which is kind of dumb on her part too, if you think about it. Just like the whole Harwin Strong thing, but he took that. And again, this is show only. This is not books. We still don't really know. George R. R. Martin will have that in his head forever, I guess. But um, 
there was no uh, that was Otto's planning uh, again in the show planning that in her head like renee has got to secure her throne and she's going to kill your kids and she bought into it when there's really no reason for it and 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 of course them being close if they would remain close and just talked she would have realized no she don't really have to do anything because she thinks everybody's good because they swore fealty to her so there is some i i do get that there isn't an, an idea like um you know, her listening to Otto and saying, yeah, I guess I guess she could actually try to secure her throne. Um, I think if their kids got along and all that, and, they, and the, 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 it comes into play how they look as well, being uh, obviously, you know, bastards of, of whatever. You know, if the kids got along and looked the same, I think this would all be completely different. But it's all about the kids. That, so that's – and I didn't see Renera treating him badly in any way. I, I saw him her being honest and saying, well, why can't we just do what we want to do anyway? I still have to be the queen. I have a duty. I have a – I mean, this is my name. It comes with problems. Um, so I didn't see, you know, again, book versions or show versions, any bad treatment other than, no, we can't, we can't just run off. You know, so uh, there was a thing in the book where she does say, if you would break your oath to be a king's guard, what would you do to your wife? So that was an issue too. Um, it, that, you're right, Unglant. Uh, truth, truthfully, offer of marriage being turned down makes no, exactly. It should have been exactly what she. Sh it, she it would have guaranteed everything was fine. But again, Allison is not just about oh my kids could die. She wants Aegon to be king, and fuck the you know I'm down with the patriarchy now, right? She was all. Was, that was the message, right? It was the message in the first few episodes, uh, you know, fuck the patriarchy. Now she's down with the patriarchy because her son's part of it. So that was the thing. I, I, that's why I can't stand her, one of the reasons. All right. All right, yeah, let me do that. Let me pull it. I got YouTube ready, so we'll come back in a second. We'll go over that really quickly before we get out of here, and we'll just do a quick little uh, rundown of the preview that I have not watched yet. So uh, give me a couple minutes, and I will be right back all right Bobby. let me go
All right, all right, all right. All right, let's do this. Stop that. And grab this and do this. So I got to move everything. Move that, close that. Uh, where did I put YouTube at? <clears throat> Let me move this. Got to move you guys over here so I can see the chat. And let's see what's going on next week. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hello, Fred. I'm back. Um, Musi, RIP, Lena, by the way, chat. I'm the only one who thinks she did, she did her death the way she did, so Damon didn't have to make the decision which could harm his relationship with his kids. Uh, yeah, we. I think that's certainly a good possibility. You see that she just made it, didn't put the pressure on him. Um, but it was interesting. It's sad. All right, so let me do this display, and we'll do this over here. All right, so let's check out this little preview for next week. Uh, again, this part, minor spoilers, I may mention a couple minor things. Obviously, I won't mention anything major. I tried not to, um, but uh, just, a, just a heads up. I'll just say a couple things where I think this is going to be. Other things, I'll just, you know, not. I'm not going to do any major things. But minor spoilers, potentially, just a heads up in case you don't want to do anything. So uh, <coughs> give everybody a couple seconds if you want to bow out. If you do, I understand. I appreciate you hanging out. And uh, we will check this out. Here we go. What is Lena? All right, so we know this is Lena. This brief mortal life. Lena's funeral. This is what we saw in the, the first, obviously, uh, big trailer. If not the pursuit of legacy. So yeah, that's that's obviously Lena's funeral. We play an ugly game. Now we're getting uh, all right. So now uh, you know we got Raina, uh, Rainies. I'm sorry, she just took her rings off. Ugly game. She's pissed. Ugly game. Hold on, I'm trying to. Wait, let's hear the thing again. We play an ugly game. We play an ugly game. Like she's ready to go to war. You could say, like, like she's ready to like take her shit off and go go hop on a dragon. Is what I'm saying. Play an ugly game. Now we see full Vagar. We got a good, couple good shots of him this episode, but full Vagar is now riderless. So um, we'll see what happens probably next episode. We'll see if we get the shots of whoever we may see. If you want to be a strong queen, your subjects must fear you. All right, so this time she's on Dragonstone. Strong queen, your subjects must fear you. Let's see who said. Fear you. Fire is such strange power. Everything that House Targaryen possesses is owed to it. Someone stole Vagar. Uh oh, okay. So there you go. So someone stole Vagar. Uh, looks like at this point, so Damon's back. I don't think there will be. I wonder if we're going to see in the same episode um, Damon's next move. Um, again, it's pretty clear what's happening here, but the kids look about the same age. Uh, so we'll see if there's a, uh, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any time jump. I wouldn't imagine. Maybe it's uh it's obviously not with the, the funeral. So I imagine maybe a, a, a you know, a, a week or something, whatever. So Targaryen possesses his ode to it. Everything a Targaryen possesses owed to fire is what she was saying. We see an eye here. Uh, what are they watching? I can't see who this. Is. These are Valarion's here. I can't see the dragon there. It looks gray. I don't know if that'd be sea smoke. Someone stole Vagar. Oh, I guess that maybe that's Vagar from a distance. Somebody stole Vagar. Okay, that's obviously going to be... Vagar's going to be claimed. Vagar. Now we see... Who is that? We, okay, we got the... Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I won't say... All right, looks like Damon's taking care of somebody in here. We did see that from the previous teaser. There was a shot where... This is a random uh, guy, I'm assuming on Driftmark, 
We don't know who this is, but he's snapping necks. We see the kids fighting, as we saw in the previous teaser as well, but this is Lanor here. Um, I'm not going to mention him. Uh, maybe you've met him. Maybe. I'm assuming this is what this is going to be. There is a debt to be paid. All right, so if she's already doing the debt to be paid thing, right, so this means that um, one of her kids has, uh, let's see, <laughs> Um, gotten hurt, got injured. Wait, what was this? Was this, uh, mm, is this Masaria possibly? I see a little white hood here. Probably Masaria maybe. Uh, I don't know if this is Driftmark. It looks like Essos, but I'm not really sure. Ah, the boys fucked around to find out. Exactly, Meg. Exactly. Somebody's about to fuck around to find out. Debt to be paid. So this is, uh, if she's saying there's a debt to be paid, this has already happened, um, and Vagar has been claimed, and there was a little scuffle. Right there. This is the highest of treasons. Otto. Okay, hold on, I'm just backing up here a little bit. So there is the little scuffle. The kids really don't like each other at this point, you know, because, you know, the parents are... Also putting stuff in their hair, especially Allison. And then there's uh, Raina and Bela. This is the highest of treasons. Highest of treasons. Uh, the Socorlis is back here. Uh, don't know if this is at King's Landing or what, if, or this is Renera. I mean, Allison running in. Let's see here. Otto's back. Clubfoot. Vagar. Let's see. Is there somebody there? He looks like a little, I don't know if that's that certain person there, but uh, it looks like it's a little too far back on him. I don't think that's where you said. I think the saddle's up here between the wings. Nah, I don't look, didn't look like it. This is the same thing we saw in the teaser. She's grabbing the dagger from Viserys. I promise you. And there is Otto picking up Aemond. What is Otto doing here already? I promise you in time, you and I together will prevail. Otto gets his pen back. Promise you in time, you and I together will prevail. Talking about Allison. This is probably right after um, she tries to stab either uh, Fabian. I don't want to say who Lenore was fighting because that will be a big, uh, uh, pretty, not a giant spoiler, but a spoiler. Um, let's uh, let that play out without mentioning that. I'll, 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 talk about that in the preview video and and do a spoiler warning properly but for the sake of this little stream here i don't want to say um i will say you've already seen this person uh you met him um this is probably after she tries to i don't know if she's actually trying to stab renera here herself or one of her kids because of the scuffle that this happened uh which happens at the same time as vagar all that stuff so um i believe that would probably be this where the Blade has cut her hand where she was trying to, like we saw in the previous teaser. Now they see you. There, just this, this part. Now they see you as you are. So obviously, this is all, mostly stuff from the main teaser we got earlier. So that's where the blood's coming from, is her, I believe, holding that dagger. So very similar to Catelyn Stark, I believe. Um, maybe not as bad. I'm not sure exactly where she's grabbing, but it looks like she probably got cut. Um, so. Again, without going into too deep of spoilers, this is uh, all about these kids. And this episode, the major thing it looks like is about the kids getting into it. Um, something goes down. Somebody gets injured. Pretty good. Vagar claimed the same time uh, since Lena is no longer around, unfortunately. And then the uh, this deepens the hatred between the, the, the princess and the queen. Um Trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, that looks like, yeah, again, Vagar. That looks like Balin Rain. Okay. Yeah, that was probably them looking out the window at Vagar. Because um, this is probably, this looks like it may change here. They're going to be looking out the thing, seeing somebody with Vagar, and it's going to be a little different from the books, it looks like. Someone stole Vagar. 
This looks like it might be Masaria coming back, setting her up later. I'm not sure. Or I don't know. Maybe I just see that white thing right there. I can't really tell, obviously. There is a debt to be paid. I'm trying to see that scene there. All right, there's Bela, Reyna. Uh, let's see, Lenore, Renera. There's, there's Joff. No, I'm sorry. There's uh, Saris and Jace, I guess. I don't see. This is Driftmark because you got this thing. So this is definitely Driftmark. So, yeah, this is that night. That's where it's going to be. This is the highest of treasons. I promise you in time, you and I together will prevail. I don't know what Otto's doing there picking up Amond. Uh, that's, I don't know. That's random. Uh, anyway, so she's, he's talking to Allison there, I believe. Now they see you as you are. Now they see you as you are. Fucking biatch. So Allison in full Allison mode. <laughs> um, anyway. There you go. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Pretty straightforward. All right. Um, and a lot of the, the, you know, the main teaser trailer we saw. So, there you go. I know I, I, I could mention some things and tell you exactly what those are, but I, I don't want to uh, to spoil anything for anybody who doesn't want to know anything. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, exactly, Meg. So, it looks like... Uh, Looks like the girls witnessed the scuffle. Apparently, maybe uh, we'll see if they're the. Uh, looks like it's a little bit different from the books because actually, the scuffle um, starts with um, Amon's there doing what Amon's going to do. Which again, not just I know people kind of know, but I just don't want to say it for just in case. Um, but then Joffrey is uh, three. This should be actually a three-year time jump, technically, but we'll see. Um, Joffrey is the one that runs out, and he's three at the time, and and confronts. This is a three-year-old boy confronting Amond. So we'll see if they do a time jump here. If they just make it, you know, Lucerus or Jaceris or something like that, we'll see. Um, anyway, I don't. Are we off? Are we offline? I don't. Okay, no, never mind. Never mind. I see. I didn't see any chats. Um. Damon, yeah, he's he's uh, Damon looks like Fred Hampton. He's he's making a move to uh, get back closer to the throne, essentially. Now that he uh, now that he has no wife, again, for the second time. Um. Anyway, so there you go. There's what's happening next week in House of the Dragon. Um. Anyway. We'll let everybody get out of here. It's about 12.30. Get out of here and uh, have a great week, everybody. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for the Super Chats um, and channel memberships. Matt Tyler, Lady Eternal, Frazzled, um, Lady Jen, Paula Rose, Hairless Oyster, Randy Sui Matsu, uh, Tanuvial, Greenleaf, uh, Lady Jen, uh, Maria Noel becoming a member as well, and I believe, believe uh, Paula Rose, if I didn't say Paula. Um, what's up, Wendy C? How are you? Uh, just now getting out of here, Wendy. So, uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> hello, hello, good night. Um, anyway, thank you guys. Um, again, I will, I'll jump on the uh, tomorrow. I'll jump on the, I'll break this teaser down a little more and then, uh, we'll see if I'll do a review. I don't know, maybe not. I kind of want to talk about Rings of Power too. I don't know. I'd rather do live streams, but we'll see. Uh, if you, if anybody's watching that, um, I got grievances with it, but I do actually enjoy it more than I thought I would. It's not as nearly as bad as people are saying. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. If anything, we'll see because we're already halfway through that too. But um, yeah, we're going. We're getting good now. We're getting into the meat of things here, some of the major things, and um, war is on the horizon. Um, Pen Muse, yes, thank you, Pen. Buy the Crimson Gods, yes. It's on sale still on Amazon right now for like ten dollars or maybe twelve for the hardcover. Still a really good deal compared to the normal. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Thank you, everybody, for who's gotten it already and leaving reviews on Amazon as well. Really appreciate that. really helps a lot. Um, thank you, Mods. Really appreciate you keeping straight. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a good week, and we'll see you next time.